Hi, everyone. Hi. So um, my name's Dermot. Uh, this is going to be something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not an iOS guy. I'm not a dev. Um, my background's design. I uh, work as a product manager and uh, a business analyst at the moment. So um, my talk doesn't have any statistics in it either. I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, design. Um, and I'm going to give this talk with 10% more love than I normally do because it is Valentine's Day. Um, so this talk is about design, but it's going to be about big design. I'm not going to talk too much really about how to make that button sexy or what fonts go together well. Um, what I want to give you guys is something that you can take away and um, develop a bit of a practice of design. So it's going to help you design pretty much anything you might come across. Um, so what it will really give you is fundamentals. And it will help you understand, hopefully, a little bit why those fonts go together when you see them, or um, why that app flow is, is awesome. Um, cool. So how am I going to do that? So I'm going to give you three things specifically today. I'm going to give you a bit of a mentality, a bit of a designer mentality that I want you to take with you. And I'll give you two more slightly hands-on things. I'm going to give you a handy-dandy five-point framework that you can design anything with. And uh, I'm going to give you some specific tips on visual design. So we'll come back to that a little bit because that is practical. Um, so something with that, something hopefully you can take forward and apply in the long term, the visual stuff, hopefully you can apply immediately. So first thing, right out of the gates, what I want to get rid of is any idea that you might have that, oh, I don't use Photoshop, I'm not a designer, oh, that, that's not me, that's someone else, that's the hungover designer over in the corner that's been on the couch for three hours and is only finally starting to do work. Just because you can't use Sketch or Photoshop or whatever it may be, most design doesn't happen at that stage. A lot of it happens way before you drag the tools out. So, um, you know, if you're an engineer or you're a doctor or you're a lawyer, those guys are doing design as well. Um, basically, I'm defining design as anything that, uh, anything you're trying to create that has a goal really is design here. Um, the, uh, the other analogy I like to use around that is, is kind of the musical analogy. So if someone asks you, what do you think of a piece of a music? Saying, you know, I don't know how to use Photoshop is like saying, well, I don't know how to play guitar. But you have ears and you've got a brain. So, you know, um, you have that skill set. The other good news is we've grown up in basically uh, probably the most designed world that's ever existed. You guys have a lifetime of exposure out to design out there in the real world. You've got this huge library of stuff within you already. Um, the problem that I see is that um, most people don't get taught which design levers to pull at which time. Basically, everyone kind of mashes the keyboard all at once. It looks like crap, and then you throw your hands up in the air and go, all right, I'm never going to try that again. Um, so what I'm going to do is break things down for you and give you some of those levers to pull. This is my handy-dandy framework. It's pretty simple. It's um, the way to think about this. It looks linear. Um, but each of these are activities that are fundamental to design. So you can go through them linearly if you want, but that's not the way I want you to kind of take these today. Each of these are activities, and one is like riding a bike, one is like cooking a dinner, another one might be like building a boat. The kind of things that you can um, develop a craft and a practice around each of them individually. Um, so try not to think about it too linear, even though I'm going to go through it in that way. Uh, these can be used at all scales. So you can go through this when you're designing an app, a whole project, or you might just have an epic or a story that you can pinch these elements out of and work through as well. Um, and so just try and keep in mind as I go through each of those the value rather than the, you know, the, f the phase that these might be um, that I'm trying to point out as I go through. Um, basically, I want you to think of these as a framework for thinking, not so much doing, if that makes sense. Um, so number one, concepts. Concepts. So <laughs> concepts where projects basically start to fail. Um, you've probably, if you've all been working in this, been in a similar scenario where the product manager or the client or whatever comes up and go, oh, we need a payment page, or we need a new shopping cart, or we need a new home page. And that's kind of equivalent to they saying, I need you to build me a boat. You have a big meeting and a kickoff meeting and go, cool, we need a boat. That's all right. Everyone walks away. First person walks away and goes, sweet, this boat is going to be awesome. Second person walks away and goes, sweet, this boat is going to be awesome. And the third person walks away and goes, sweet, this boat is going to be awesome. 
we're already starting to kind of diverge out into all of these areas. So, um, the, uh, the, 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 the trick with concept, the, the reason you get into this is because concepts, is, it's all about defining what you want, but when you don't know anything, you don't know that stuff is missing. So it kind of becomes this self-referential piece. Um, but if you can get strong concepts, they kind of do, well, they kind of work in three parts. Um, the first part is about actually figuring out what is it, what is it not, or what's important, what's not. Um, that's a simple concept, but you need to put that on steroids to actually get anywhere with it. Um, you can't really checklist this stuff. You've got to go out and face reality, um, and there's a high chance that you'll be wrong at the start. Um, but if you can be brutally honest about what is really important and what you can let go of, you will start to see those benefits. You'll start to see kind of the noise in the project disappear. You'll see more clarity. Um, decision making will start to speed up. People will start to direct. It's a really nuanced thing, but it's something that you can get better at and it kind of has all these benefits that flow on into the rest of the project as you go forward. Um, alignment, priority, focus, all these other things kind of come from that. There is a more kind of fundamental reason though as to why concept is powerful and that has to do with the actual nature of design itself. Um, so nature, the beast that it is, it is, uh, it's, a, it's a winding, meandering path. It does not want to go in a straight line, basically. Um, so if you can find the things that you can't be flexible on, then you can let the thing, everything else go. And you can kind of roll with whatever comes up. Um, don't try and fight the way design wants to work. It wants to take you off onto this thing. And if you can go with that, you will often find that your best ideas or some of the greatest ideas you find are off when you're on that sidetrack over there doing something else. Um, it's something very inherent, um, but if you can roll with it, it, it makes life much easier um, later on. Um, the other part is really about articulation. And that's kind of the key way to think about developing good concept. If uh, I have all the colors of the rainbow to describe an idea to you, and someone else can only describe colors in terms of light and dark, they're never really going to be able to reach the level that I can in terms of developing a great concept and communicating that out. So articulation really comes down to, to paying attention and practicing um, de the description of all these different aspects that you might have within your concept. Um, the word concept itself. Again, thinking about the point of this section is, you can call it whatever you want. I don't really care. Um, different clients, different projects, different businesses, they are going to have something where they're trying to figure out what this thing is. Um, I like to personally just end up, I tend to head towards the use of principles is what I um, tend to communicating with people. Um, very sharp, well articulated principles. Not fluffy, it will vaguely do something. You want to be, you want to kind of uh, grow and create that vision around. Um, so yeah, so don't get caught up on the word concept or any of the other words um, that I'm going through with these. Um, so, a few examples of strong concept. Now, Cocoa Head, so I kind of had to put the iPod in there to kick off with. Um, the thousand songs in your pocket thing, it was a great marketing line at the time, but the reason that resonated is because it spoke to the concept of what the iPod was at the time. Um, if you're old enough, you'll remember that MP3 players at the time were absolute rubbish. Uh, you know, Sony would put out, they would design something based what I call on, um, basically designed by spreadsheet. I need to build a slightly better product to this kind of, uh, to, this, uh, to this budget, basically. And you're never going to kind of leapfrog or do anything great by working that way. Your concept in that, state, in that, in that view is to be made maybe a little bit better than the competition. So, um, you know, starting from zero and kind of wiping the slate clean and thinking about what you really need kind of gets you to places like that. Uber is another great example. Um, they are basically a company that did not think like a taxi company. They focused on other things, they made other things important, and that's why they got to where they are. They had a very firm uh, sense of what their concept was. Um, and I just threw these guys in for fun. This is um, a small operation in London called Bombus and Par. They are basically, they work with jelly. 
is, is basically the best way I can put it. They do all sorts of jelly-based exhibitions, and they do the most ridiculous stuff you could ever think. I'm pretty sure they're just sitting there coming up with concepts and whatever, which is great. Um, they put this one in 55,000 liters of jelly. There is a whole bunch of tie-ins with lime jelly and lime in the ship and scurvy and all these sorts of things. But from a conceptual point of view, they, their starting point was we want to put smiles on dials. We want to warp people's brains a little bit. We want a bit of press around these things. Um, and they kind of had that strength of concept. So uh, I'm going to contextualize things in the, in the space of app development a little bit, but it's kind of wide open in terms of where you can start with this stuff. Um, how to get there, how to get strong concepts. Start from zero. You're going to have all this knowledge, but you need to sort of get rid of all your preconceptions, basically. Um, drill, ask questions, lots of questions. Uh, people, you will usually find a stellar project, there'll be a meeting where like, oh, we're just trying to get the shape of this thing. And that's kind of the right way to think about it. Uh, to get the shape of something, you have to have multiple perspectives. You have to walk up around it and kind of touch it and all this kind of stuff. So if you hear that kind of line, then that's when to kind of zoom in and, and, and really um, start asking those questions. Do you actually understand what's important and what's not? Um, live it, empathize it. If you can get in and experience the space that this, this concept or app is going to live, go there and do it. You'll learn a lot more a lot quickly. Um, and don't forget to communicate. So it's good for you, you to understand and your team to understand. You need to kind of push that out as well. Um, how to know if you've got a strong concept. So go talk to people. Uh, explain like I'm five is always fun. Um, find someone that will endlessly ask you questions and just challenge them to keep going until they get tired and, and give up, basically. Um, and the other key one is uh, maybe more immediate. If, if you've got a team at work, ask if the business or if the product owner or whoever's in charge of giving direction was to disappear for a month or two months or six months, how well would that team carry on? If you've got a strong concept, they'll keep making decisions and, and keep going in the right direction. Um, so basically, just summing up concept, you basically want to come down from the hill with the Ten Commandments. That's kind of what this is about. Had to put that one in it as well. Figure out what your thing is, tell everyone. It's, it's underrated, and each of these ideas are really simple, um, but hard to master. Um, list. List is really, really underrated. Uh, this isn't a wish list, this is an ingredients list. So if you have a strong concept, this all gets a lot easier. Um, writing things down and writing down what you need is really, really undervalued. It, it kind of pushes into um, the next stage that I'll talk about. But um, I'm going to use a little bit of a silly analogy here. And uh, let's say our concept is, um, we've got one team and another team. One team's they've got a strong concept. It's, I want to make a really lovely, rustic roast dinner, beautiful lights, um, you know, that kind of thing. And the other team is food. My concept is food, right? Weak, strong. So if you're going to get your ingredients, it's basically you're pulling all the things out of the universe that you could get. It's kind of like going to the shopping center. If you're on the good team with the strong concept, you're going to go to the supermarket with your team, and they're going to be like, potatoes, yes, it's roast dinner, we need potatoes. You know, ham, yes, of course. And that's going to go in a good direction um, for the team that kind of has a really good vision of what they're after. If you're on the team with the uh, not-so-strong vision, what's going to happen is you're going to be walking past uh, these guys, and you're going to say to your, pro, uh, your, your project owner or whatever, do we need sprinkles? And you're going to go, oh, yeah, I love sprinkles. Let's get some. Put them in the trolley. We need those. And then, because no one really knows what's going on, what tends to happen is more people from other departments are in. So Janet is in, from HR is in part of this as well. She loves Mexicans, so we're getting some tacos now as well. And then before you know it, you're doing some sort of bullshit Twitter integration because God knows why. So again, you can see how this kind of very quickly gets out of, out of control and just starts to muddy the waters. Um, the other part of this that I don't have on this is while it keeps unnecessary stuff out, it's also great for not um, getting hung up on analyzing things you don't need to. So, Keeping in with this analogy, if someone's like, oh, do we need carrots or do we need, you know, sweet potato? Well, you don't need actually to spend too much time stressing about that. If it fits the roast, you know, just grab it and go. It's not actually going to make a difference. It, it doesn't really matter. A um, bit more of a practical example. So um, this, is, this is the kind of thing that I've done very early on in projects. And we have a tendency in Agile to kind of push the details to later. 
because we don't know. But some stuff you do know up, up front, and you do know it if you've got a strong concept. Um, this can be really practical. This is, you know, I've got a few screens. I've got one screen here, and you start thinking through it. I'm going to need this many user tasks, this many buttons, a couple of paragraphs for this, a couple of paragraphs for that. And this, again, just starts to, to develop that articulation and gives you the ability to have higher level conversations. It's back to that rainbow um, thing uh, with the team earlier on, and that gets you to a better place. Um, you don't have to stop at just UI, though. If you're looking at a project level, you can be like, cool, we need you know, a DevOps, three devs, a Fed, whatever it is. Um, list everything that you think you might need. Um, the value in this is uh, you guys are probably all well across this. You know, we don't do UI designs because wireframes are cheaper and easier to do that. And it's cheaper and easier to just sketch on a piece of paper as well. And it's probably quickest and easiest just to bang out a list in five to ten minutes, and you actually get a lot of the value of that sometimes. Um, you do need to go to wireframes, obviously, at some point, but early on, this will get you a long way. Um, outcomes of list. So, keeping in with that analogy, if You've got your list, you know what you're doing, you end up with organized things. You end up with roast and you end up with places that look like this. If you're the other team, you basically end up with fire <laughs> first of all. <laughs> That's, you know, and the reason I like this is because the Hilton has really strong concept and pretty strong lists. Fire festival, so much concept, no lists whatsoever. So. Um, next one, architect. Arrange that stuff good. Basically, the question here is, what is the best arrangement of the ingredients given my goals or given my concept? And you can see how they start to kind of um, lean on each other quite heavily. Um, the answer is always to this question, whatever fits my concept best. So you start making life easier for yourself in one activity by, by doing a higher level job at the other activity. Um, you can, uh, you know, you do get to this uh, stage of wireframes, obviously, but if you've experienced it where you just do this endless cycle of wireframes, right, and you're constantly going back and people are making changes, it's because either they don't know what's meant to be in there or they don't really know what that thing is meant to be. A um, little bit of a sidebar on this, just to kind of reiterate this point. So you can see how a strong list of stuff makes it much easier to... Um, to architect bits and pieces. So the question is, how much or how strongly do you want to link these things together? And if I come back to the analogy of one's cooking a dinner and one's riding a bike, you don't want to do those things too much at the same time. Too much overlap is bad. If you're trying to architect and then you're adding more things in, you're just going to go around in circles. Basically, this is healthy. Ooh, hello. Smooth. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is healthy. You want to be kind of ramping down one activity and ramping up into the other. And that's not because so much uh, that, make, because that makes sense in a process flow. It's because if you're focused on one of these things, you're more likely to get into the state of flow. You're more likely to get into a good space where you can focus and do better work in each of those activities. Um, again, nonlinear. You could go round in this a number of times, and that's completely fine. Just don't try and do both of them at the same time. Uh, so detail. Um, if you don't know Charles and Ray Eames, they're one of my favorites. They're from you know, about 50 years ago. They're a, uh, they're a good couple. They're worth looking up. They have a lot of good um, comments on design. Uh, this quote about detail is people often go, oh, it's just you know, this fluff or it's the corner radius or whatever. I'm not going to worry too much about that. But it is... Um, it is stuff that matters. It's stuff, the detail is what you notice on almost a subconscious level with things. And I'm going to use UI examples, but it could be anything. Um, the analogy I have is, again, back with music. If you have music and you have it with a lot of low bass, you don't really hear it, you feel it. And that's the same with details. You may not notice it, but if it's all there and it's done well, you're even more likely to notice it. Yes, uh, less. Um, to reiterate, reiterate that point about concept, right? If we go back to the boats analogy, and you're asking, well, what should the floor be, right? The architecture tells you, yep, floor is here. Uh, if you're a luxury liner, you might be carpet, marble, that kind of thing. Warship, non-slip tiles. If I tell you I've got a boat, it's between 10 and 700 feet long, it's got seats, a horn, anchor, a crane, and a salad bar, 
what flooring should it have? Again, <laughs> yes? Bouncy castle? Hey, not bad. <laughs> um, again, all these things, so when you get to the level of detail, you're bringing in list, architecture, and your concept, all to kind of answer these questions. Um, detail is really about craft. And in the visual design space, it's all about these visual design pieces. I'm going to talk about that. But if you're coders, uh, what you're doing there at the code level, that is your craft, right? And so those details, how things are indented, how things um, are commented, all this kind of stuff does make a difference in the long run. Um, so a little bit of another sidebar. So I'm going to drop into some specific stuff about visual design. I won't try not to get too fluffy on you. Um, to, me, to my mind, there's actually quite a great logic within this stuff. So I'd be remiss if I didn't start with uh, design elements. Now, who's seen anything that looks like this before? A few people, yeah. Who's actually fine with pulling out Photoshop or Sketch? Who kind of does that? Master? Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, if, <laughs> if you haven't seen this before, it's... Uh, worth Googling uh, visual design elements and principles, which I have on the next slide. They kind of get taught like shit most of the time. Um, people take it really literally, and they think that line means line on a page. That's not what this stuff is about. All of this stuff is important because what it does to your brain and your eyes. Um, so, for example, point will hold your attention, and you will look at that. You didn't tell yourselves to look at that blue dot, but your eye moved there without you actually willing it, right? Um, you can't help look at points. Lines are all about uh, moving your eye. Your eye will want to follow lines, right, without you actually asking it to. And it's not just a line. It's anything that your brain thinks is a line momentarily. It might be two different objects that lined up or a bunch of colors that look like a line. Um, shape, form, kind of same things. That's where the brain starts actually thinking it's something physical and it gives it a mental weight. So I won't go through all of these, but um, the takeout here really is you've got these levers that you can pull in visual design at a very, very basic level um, to kind of uh, get the body and the eyes to do things. Um, the other half of it is the visual design principles. And these are basically all about grouping. The brain is basically a, <laughs> the brain is basically a uh, pattern recognition Engine. That's what it does. It's always looking for patterns. And I think the thinking on this stuff comes back to caveman days where you're always looking out for the get eaten by the line and that kind of thing. Um, but if it's useful to you, a way to think about visual design is you are basically doing pattern management. And that's kind of all you're doing. Pattern management and grouping, really. Um, if you have a lot of stuff or the brain perceives a lot of stuff, well, then it's got to work harder to look through all these things. If you've got two things, it's easier and it's going to jump into... Um, uh, accepting it. Um, line's one of my favorite, and just to illustrate how powerful this is, there's no circle here at all, but you see one because your brain, our edge detection is one of the most uh, out of control things. We're really, really in tune with that. Um, we'll see a circle because our eyes follow the line and create the rest of that. Um, now, I'll get off the theory because uh, I've talked about that enough. Um, and I'll give you some examples. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a well-known app and uh, I'm going to make it worse, basically. <laughs> uh, well, and the way I'm going to make it worse is I'm going to use some of those levers that I talked about and I'm going to start screwing around with them. So I've taken Messenger uh, just because we all know it and it's easy to work with. Um, this is the default. I've just grabbed this screenshot out of the, um, out of the app store, basically. Um, and if we remove some alignment, not too bad. Take a little bit more out. Maybe we want that centered there for some reason. Um, interesting as well, we've also created two eye lines here. We've got the very left one, and then we've got the one that starts at the circle at the top and aligns with all the text. So we've kind of added more things for the brain to try and work through. If you take out contrast, things start to change a little bit more. Um, I'm going to throw off the balance of the menu at the bottom and um, destroy the proportion of those. And I've only done a few of these things here. That's after, that's before. Now, whether you think that's better 
and I've been subtle here for, uh, on purpose, or that's better, is kind of comes down to your concept. What are you actually trying to draw focus to here? You can get really drastic, oops. You can get really drastic and take all the color out. That's the only change between the first one and the last one. Take all the color out of that, right? Just one of those levers. And if you kind of take, take a little bit of a mental step back there for a little bit, your brain between this, that should look like eight, nine groups. This probably looks like three groups to you. You're gonna have a thing at the top, you've got a really solid line that divides that. You've got another thing in the middle and they're all together because of the same color, the same shape and the way the pattern is. And then you've got all this black and white stuff down there at the bottom. Because there's not much distinguishing from it, your brain is kind of putting it in a little bit of a box. Um, maybe that's good, maybe you want three things. Maybe the stuff up, in, up the top is more important, maybe it's not. Um, it's kind of up to you to make that decision. Um, but this kind of links back to some of the points I was making around having a sexy button, all those fonts. It all comes back to what you're trying to do uh, using those levers. Um, doesn't have to apply to UI. I've grabbed this, I've taken all the words out. The actual particulars are not important. Um, that's made way more readable. And the really, the only thing that's going on there is I've used line to talk about the, um, the primary piece there and I've called that out. And uh, while it is a small difference, if we start adding more and more stuff to this, these things become you know, complicated quite quickly. Someone that sees this, if you're in a meeting and they, they kind of see this and they go, cool, and then six weeks away they haven't worked on this, they're gonna remember it a little bit better, they're gonna take it on board a little bit better and it's gonna help everything move forward. Um, so you can apply this anywhere. Um, if you're gonna ask me what elements, what are those elements and principles do I choose when, there's no easy answers, I'm sorry. It kind of depends on what you want. Um, look for guidance from your architecture and your conceptual needs, try stuff out. Minimal's good, it's kind of easier to get the hang of. Just use, and you know, if you really want some advice, just use Futura and a lot of white space, that works pretty well. Um, and you know, if you are drawing up an architectural diagram or you are doing a mock-up, screw around with some of those levers and just see which ones resonate with you. Some will, I like line, that's what I work with. That's when people talk about artistic style or their style, they're actually talking about the person's use of that stuff. Um, so you can get away with using a couple um, to serve your purposes. Um, had to put a squircle in here. Uh, <laughs> the outcomes of detail, it, it's, it's a hard thing to describe in words. The best analogy I have is that bass music feel. Um, if you do this stuff, people don't notice it, but they feel it's better or they understand it better. Um, the way I also talk about it sometimes is concept is detail and abstract and detail is detail and detail, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, the, the squircle is, you guys all know about this, I'm sure, yeah, no? Got a few nods, a few shows, we're at, I'm gonna show a hands who knows about the squircle. Ah, oh, interesting, all right. So, something, some more homework for you guys. Have a Google on the squircle. Uh, every one of your MacBooks, the corner on the edge there, it's not a perfectly rounded corner, it's a squircle. And what's special about it is basically, it, um, it's a less aggressive corner. It is the tiniest difference, but it fits in with uh, Apple's design philosophy and concept of, um, flow, smoothness, creativity, which means I want the smoothest line I can possibly have. And mathematically, a squircle is uh, smoother than a rounded corner. So look that one up. Uh, to finish off, I'm not gonna talk about test too much because you guys already have a wealth of knowledge around this stuff. But test your ideas, test your concepts, build them and test them. Use what you know from agile and software testing practices. That stuff's pretty much good for everything. You can adapt it pretty easily. Always go for qualitative and quantitative. Um, and let go of your baby. If you're designing anything, there's always a tendency to kind of hold on to bits and pieces um, and be like, that's mine, I've done it, I've come up, it's a great idea, I don't want to let go of it. Um, but you kind of got to throw it out and, and let it be what it will be. Um, that's kind of it. That's the five activities uh, or five ways, of, ways to look at five activities of design. If you get good at these, they'll help all the other ones. Um, you'll end up with better concepts, you'll end up with better products. Um, you'll end up with better architectural diagrams, hopefully. <laughs> it matters. 
Uh, any questions, guys? No, just stunned everyone into submission. <laughs> So coming from a guy that doesn't know anything about design yeah. at all, uh, what, would be, what would be some good resources to better educate myself on the design, design philosophies of iOS apps? Like, uh, on iOS apps? Yeah, that's the medium I'm currently working with, but also design principles in general as well. That would from, a, from a front end or a back end perspective, do you work in? Or? Uh, I'd say front end at the moment. OK. <laughs> <laughs> But it's an app. OK, it's you, sure? you sure you know where you're working? <laughs> um, no, I'm building my own app, so. Yeah, look, from, um, from an app point of view, if you're looking at UI, I would direct you to look at these, at a very base level, there's kind of layers of principles, basically. At a very base level, you've got these visual elements and principles, and that stuff's in your DNA, right? There's just no getting away from that. On top of that, we start to learn stuff, so principles come out of that. So. Um, the iOS guidelines are actually really good um, as a starting point, the Apple design guidelines. Um, I'd take a look at some of the other ones as well. So the material stuff and a lot of what other, the other majors have put together is actually really good stuff um, for Apple or digital design. Um, the other thing I direct you towards is um, there's a lot you can read about um, UX heuristics uh, as well. So the principles of things like affordance and all these kinds of things. Um, are really key. A lot of it comes down to psychological um, kind of biases and things uh, first, but that's the kind of stuff I'd look up. Yep. Any more questions? No? Um, another comment. Dermot, are you, yep. you going to run like workshops or something? That sounds like <laughs> it's, I was sitting, standing at the back here going, this could be like a workshop. I'm, I'm waiting for you to kind of run me through an activity now. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, look. Now, now write this down. Now do that. <laughs> there's, um, there's, there's a lot more. I kind of throw a lot in here because it's, it's a very wide view on design. Um, I guess I'd say just, you know, I'd love to, to run workshops. Um, I, I tried to simplify it down, though, so much to these very kind of plain English kind of bits and pieces. Because at the end of the day, if you're creating something, we have all these big words in technology for all these fancy things, but it usually boils down to actually a, a very simple thing that we're trying to do. Um, and paying attention to that, I find to be really powerful, at least in, in, in my work. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cheers.